Applying the Pythagorean Theorem. First we learned what it was, then we learned how to do it backwards, now we're going to learn how to apply it to the quote-unquote real world. I say that because with a grain of salt, that's what the quote-unquote real world should always be applied to in these math problems. Somebody a long time ago, when they're coming up with word problems, did their best to try and find applicable situations for much of this theoretical math from centuries ago. Some of it holds up. Others of it ends up being a meme or a comic book about having way too many cantaloupes if you're ordering at a farmer's market. These problems, they're pretty good, but still, you might not perfectly encounter each of these situations in real life, so just, again, take it with a grain of salt. Also, I know word problems can be very difficult for people. That's why I'm so glad that we have this video lesson so that I could walk you through step-by-step step each of these scenarios and you could see how the word problem translates to computation and helps you get the problem done. So if you're one of those out there who normally hates word problems, take a breath, relax, and just make sure you pay attention to every step and go as slow as you need to, watch the problems as many times as you need to, because I will end up showing you exactly how to do each and every one of these. Right off the bat though, one and two are building off what we just got done, true and false. It says, a triangular playground was constructed at the city park. The sides of the playground measure 120 feet, 135 feet, and 151 feet. True or false, the playground is in the shape of a right triangle. So a reminder from the last assignment, if you haven't done that one, go do that one now, especially because it's much simpler and easier than anything that we'll necessarily do toward the later end of this assignment. Go do that and just know that, again, all we have to do is we have to see if A squared, so our smallest number squared, plus our middle number squared, does that equal our largest number squared? If so, it's true, and if they don't, like mine, it's false. You will also notice that this one is not multiple choice. So if you end up missing this, you can redo it and keep, uh, keep going until you get it right. You got a 50-50 shot, but this takes just a, a few seconds to plug it in. This proves, like we did last time, that we either have a right triangle, like these problems are asking for, or it's also a way of seeing if what's called a Pythagorean triple is there. And sure enough, I had a feeling one would be false and one would be true. Make sure to have both scenarios. All right, because these are word problems, these are going to take diagrams. They're going to be a little bit longer. That's why instead of like last time we had 12 problems because they were super easy, fast, true or false. Most of the time we'll have around 10. This problem, you'll notice for this assignment, is only seven questions. All right. Now, let's dive into the word problems, starting with this one. I'll read it now. A 66, again, your numbers are going to be different, just pay attention to the kind of problem it is. A 66-foot cable helps support a straight vertical antenna that stands in a level flat field. The cable is attached to the antenna 51 feet above the ground. The cable is attached to the ground blank feet from the base of the antenna. Round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. All right, we're going to construct this scene here. First of all, we have a flat ground. For that flat ground, I'm going to use uh, green. And let's just make this flat-ish ground right there. Okay. So there's your flat field, your flat ground. And then it says we have a vertical straight antenna. Let's think of this like a, like a flagpole. There it is. Okay. And then the cable is going to be, let's see, the antenna is going to stand straight up and it's going to be supported by this cable that runs diagonally. I'm going to make the cable mm, orange. So this cable is going to be orange. Oh, I guess that's not perfect. Let me zoom in, try and get this really perfect out there. All right, there it is. Okay, so notice... We are solving for how much it is on the ground. So the ground here is in green, so I'll make our X green. They tell us how far the cable stretches and how tall the antenna is. So we have a 66 foot cable. Uh, oh, sorry, the cable. We have a 51 foot antenna and a 66 foot cable. Okay, which makes sense because, again, your largest, your largest number should always be 
in this hypotenuse spot. All right, a little review of the Pythagorean theorem. If we have x on one of our legs here, here, we learned a few assignments ago that that means that we should do the square root of our largest number squared minus our smallest number squared. So much of what these word problems are, are just trying to figure out, do we put a plus sign here or a minus sign? Now we can see that because x is where the cable meets the ground and the ground in between the cable and the antenna, that we do not have a hypotenuse, we need to do a minus sign. So let's go over to our calculator now. I'm closing this out in three, two, one, boom. All right, so I can get rid of all of my true false work up here. Reminder that the, uh, the square root symbol is down there. Okay, so I've got my smallest number squared after my largest number. So put your largest first. I'll show you what happens if you don't. If you don't do that, if you screw up and put your smallest number first, watch what happens. You get an undefined error. That's why we always need to have our largest number first. All right, it says to round to the nearest tenth. We have done this already, so I'm just going to keep this explanation brief. Reminder about our rhyme here. The tenth is the first digit, so I always have to look at my second one. I can erase everything else. doesn't exist. If this number to the right of my wall is five or above, then I give it a shove. If it's four or below, then I leave it alone. Nah. Because 9 is 5 or above, 41.89 rounds up to 41.9. I do not know if your specific problem will round up, but that is the rule. If the second number is 5 or above, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then you give it a shove and you round up. All right, number 4. And again, pause or rewind if you need still more time on number 3. An ocean-going ship travels 387 miles due north, changes course, and then travels 278 miles due east. At the end of this trip, the ship is blank miles from its starting point. All right. Let's uh, remind ourselves a little bit about compasses. So if I've got a little cross-section here. Straight up is always due north, north pole. The bottom of the earth is the old south pole, S. And then this gets a little confusing if you're like me in Oregon, if you're watching this video, not Oregon, Oregon, then you know that the West Coast, the West part of the United States that you live is over here. And the East Coast, with New York, the Atlantic Ocean, everything else, Florida, the whole Eastern Seaboard is over there on the right side. You used to maybe memorize this by saying, Never eat soggy waffles, never eat soggy worms, or just thinking of it almost like news, but not written out perfectly, like news. I don't know what you did, but this is what it is. All right, so now that we have reminded ourselves of our cardinal directions, we can follow our word problems directions as well. An ocean-going ship travels 387 miles due north. So I'm going to just represent this uh, ship with a dot. So it starts here, and then it goes north, so that's up, and then it changes course and travels due east, so that's, again, east we know is right, so I draw it to the right, and then finally, it wants to know how far it has gone, and it tells us how far it goes north. And then it tells us how far it goes east. Well, now we have our question. Do we do the plus sign in the middle or do we do the minus sign in the middle? Well, in this case, our x is in our largest side, our hypotenuse. That means when we write this out, we're going to do one side squared plus the other side squared, not minus. Okay? Closing this to do my calculation in three, two, one, closing it. All right. So for number four, you can do one number squared plus the other number squared. 
and we will round the same way. I've got 476.50. Zero. zero is less than five, so I leave it low. Yeah. 476.5. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Number five is another ocean-going ship problem, but it is set up a little differently, so let's see what happens. I will once again make a dot as my ship, and I will follow the directions. An ocean-going ship travels 389 miles due south. I won't draw the cardinal direction again, but just remember that means down. Okay. Changes course and travels due east, but they don't tell you how far due east. At the end of the trip, the ship has traveled a total of 488 miles from its starting point. Okay, so they give you, in this case, maybe I'll, I'll color code it. They give you how far it goes south, and they give you how far it's it ends up being at the end. So they don't give you blank miles to the east. So I will put that in orange to distinguish what we're solving for. So I've got 389 south, and I've got 488 at the end from its starting point, and I need to solve for how far it goes due east. That orange X is not in my hypotenuse. Good sign, though, that my largest number is up here. Therefore, we're going to need to subtract. We're going to need to subtract and do the square root of our largest number squared minus our smallest number squared. Okay. So let's fill in our numbers here. So I've got 488 squared minus, changing that middle plus to a minus, 389. And then I'm rounding correctly, 0.65. All right, the five rounds up, makes that round up from a six to a seven, so 294.7. Awesome. Blossom, awesome blossom with extra awesome. Correct. Number six is going to be the same as number seven. Okay, and each of these now, so we are going up a dimension. This is kind of fun. Because we've had a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's been our two-dimensional right triangle Pythagorean theorem. What happens now in this problem that says a rectangular prism, ooh, that's a three-dimensional object, is nine inches wide, seven inches long, five inches high. The longest diagonal measures blank inches. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Ooh, so this is a two-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. We're gonna go up a notch. Wow, oh, my handwriting is so great as always. Let's just uh, let's get rid of let's get rid of that word. Okay, we're gonna go up a dimension, and you're gonna say, okay, if we have a a, a b, and a c on one side representing our length, width, and height, then our diagonal, which will make a lowercase d, how far? Do we have to go to get the longest possible diagonal in this box? Well, we know C is the square root of A squared plus B squared if we're solving for a hypotenuse. So then D is the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And I will show you visually as well, because I enjoy drawing these. All right, let's have a box with that purple little side as the front. We're going to make this the back as well. So here's how you draw this. If you've ever wondered how to draw a perfect box every time. You have one face of your box. Then you try and make it exactly as similar as you can. I have technology, so I literally copied and pasted it. Upwards, just really anywhere in the diagonal. It could be in this diagonal. It could be down in that diagonal or that diagonal. And then once you have those in different spots, you draw your edges Again, I have technology that's so nice it like auto snaps it in. But you're going to connect each of your edges together. So my bottom left connected with my bottom left. My bottom right connected with my bottom right. Top left, top left, top right, top right. And then you can see, if you've drawn it correctly, it can become an optical illusion where this could be your front face. Or you could stare at it. 
and this top one becomes my front face. And you can go back and forth, and if you're like me and you occasionally have a lazy eye, it can really uh, do wonders with you. As you're doing that, I'm going to label my sides. This isn't perfectly to scale, but I've got one that's nine, and then I've got uh, seven and five. Okay. Now that you see what it is visually, let's do the computation. So I'm going to close this in three, two, one. All right, so let's do the square root. I'm going to draw a brand new square root for this. Now you'll notice because we're doing the diagonal, we're doing the hypotenuse as well, we're going to have plus signs in between. So these can technically be in any order, but I'm going to keep my just good habits of writing my largest numbers in order and then going smaller each time. But you'll see for the first time that we're going to write all three, 9 squared plus 7 squared plus 5 squared. And then I still just need to round it, just like I've been doing. 12.44. Ooh, it's a double rounding problem. See, you could round accidentally that 4 up to a 5 and that 5 up to a 5. Oh, no, 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 no. Very, very common mathematical mistake. Ignore the 9. It doesn't exist. All we care about is the 4. Is the 4 4 or below? Yes, it's literally a 4. So we leave this 4 alone. Nah, do not double round. No, 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 no. Bad. So this is not 12.5. This is 12.4. Yay. And the final one. A manufacturer needs to ship a long, narrow copper rod to a customer. He will use a rectangular box that measures 20 centimeters wide, 20 centimeters tall, and 219 centimeters long. The longest copper rod that the manufacturer can ship in this box has a length of blank centimeters. All right, real quick, let's get another one of these boxes back and I'm gonna make this a true rectangle. Because I wanna show you, so again, top left with top left, and then just match up all the corners, okay. And then again, you could stare at it where this is the front or this is the front and go back and forth. So visually, what this is saying, you might be getting Amazon packages in mail occasionally or from another company. You want to see what's the largest possible rod, this diagonal that I put in blue. You can see it stretches from one end of the box to the other. That's what it is trying to visually mean here in this problem. I could only get as large of a like straight, like say you're trying to fit a, oh, your Donatello from the Ninja Turtles. Hey, D for Donatello. And you have your like long, like fighting staff. You got to figure out a long box to fit that in diagonally. Okay, there you go. And Donatello was purple, my favorite Ninja Turtle. So there you go. That's what that means. So now we can replace these numbers with our numbers for a problem. I've got 219. 20 and 20. Ironically, this is the one that ends up being the square base. 220.81 makes it 220.8. Does not round up. Because I drew lots of fun pictures for you all and explained each and every problem, this is one of the longest videos we've had. This took us, wow, what about 18 minutes? Yeah, a little over 18 minutes to do, and a little explanation at the beginning. This is going to be close to a 20-minute video. Well, hopefully that was helpful and helped conquer your anxiety with word problems, with the Pythagorean theorem, even up a dimension to three dimensions. Pretty cool. Maybe you'll learn something today. I hope so. It has been an honor and a pleasure, as always, to explain these problems to you and be your virtual teacher, Dylan, when you've been having class away from class. Absolute best wishes in all that you do. Take care and have a great everything.